So are you wanting to play around with virtual machines? That's great because I love virtual machines as well. And there are a whole bunch of different types of virtual machines running on different hardware, running on different hypervisors. Like you can have virtual machines running on VMware. You can have them running on Proxmox, on Hyper-V. Really, really cool. And then there's a whole bunch of different types of virtual machines that you can actually build. Like you can build domain controllers. You can build servers that are for you know web development, actually build a website. You can build security servers. You can build a server where you can actually go and do development. The sky is the limit. But then the question is, well, ultimately, if you're gonna be installing virtual machines, building virtual machines, and building some sort of a hypervisor or some sort of virtual platform software, it needs to run on some tech of some sort, right? You need a physical computer of some type to actually go and build it with virtual machines. And that's the great thing about virtual machines is you can now build a whole bunch of virtual servers, virtual machines, and run them on one piece of physical tech. So you can have one physical computer running lots of different types of virtual machines. Now, what we're gonna be talking about here is, well, what is the computer that I should be using? Should I be going for a server or should I be going for a computer, for a laptop, maybe even for a little mini PC? We're gonna do a little bit of a comparison between some of the most common types and then maybe give you some recommendations about what you could be using. But hey, before we do get into that, my name is Emilio, I love tech. And if you love tech, hey, we release videos all the time on all things tech, talking about a lot of things, including virtual machines. Why don't you click on the subscription button on the bell so that you don't miss out on anything. So before we even start talking about the differences and which one you should, you know, you may want to consider, you've got to have a think about what is the purpose of this thing? Why are you even wanting a server in the first place? I mean, of course, if you're watching this video, you're wanting to build virtual servers. Great. What sort of virtual servers? What is the point? What are the virtual servers going to be used for? Because you've got to think about all of that stuff to then help you make the decision about what server, what computer, whatever it is, is the best one for you, right? If you want to go for a big server, great. But then where are you going to stick the thing, right? You're going to be able to build a lot more things, but then where are you going to put it? A smaller one? Well, it's nice. It's little. It's tiny. You can put it absolutely everywhere, but then you won't be able to build as many virtual servers onto it. So have a think about that in the first instance. Now, the other thing is when you're considering all of this, you've got to have a think about the budget. How much money do you have to spend, right? Because really the amount of money that you've got to spend is going to determine what sort of computer you're going to be buying. The more money you've got, the better computer you can go and buy. Pretty self-explanatory, right? Ultimately, a server is meant to service something. It's a server. It gives a service to something. So you can have software-based servers. You can have hardware-based servers. Essentially, any computer that has some software that is running that is helping computers out on a network. Maybe you've got some files and all of your files are sitting on this computer and other computers on your network at home in a workplace are using the computers, like the files that are sitting on that computer. Well, that computer is sort of acting like a server, right? So you can really install any sort of server software on a computer and sort of convert it into a server, right? That's the software base, high basic level of what a server is. Like that's sort of how I would define it. But then you've got the actual hardware itself, the server hardware. And that's when you get into the stuff that's a little bit more enterprisey. So a rack server. This is a rack server. This is a server that is a rack. And it's called a rack because it's made to sit inside of a server rack. Like if you think of data centers, if you think of comms rooms, server rooms, uh, stuff that's in a business to make the thing work, make the company work, you need tech. You need technology of all different types. And that's where a server comes in because you slide the server inside of these rails and it's called a rack server. But then you've got other sorts of types of servers. You've got tower servers, you've got little blades servers as well, servers of all shapes and sizes. But the nice thing about a rack server, especially if you're going to be using it to install virtual machines, is that the things are powerful. They cost a lot. Yes, they will cost a lot, but they're also really cool because you can install a whole bunch of computers onto them. So you could install Proxmox, which is an awesome hypervisor. You remove the operating system. So for example, let's say this server was running Linux or it was running Windows. Get rid of those, install Proxmox, and then you can build a whole bunch of virtual servers of all different shapes and sizes on this one little computer. And then you can install servers of all types onto this big as computer because it's a big one. It's a big as server, okay? And it's got a lot of bits inside of it. I mean, inside of one of these things, there's a lot more CPUs. There's a lot more RAM. There's a lot more opportunity for you to install a whole bunch of expansion cards. So these things are amazing and they're gonna last you a long time. So if you're considering and you've got the budget, you've got the thousands of dollars, right? Yes, you can buy cheaper ones. Now, this is one thing that's always a nice little tip is uh, I've got a big one. This is a 
a HP Pro Lite, which is what I've got, but this was uh, expensive. You can get cheaper ones, go down to the eBay machine and look for cheaper versions of servers and rack servers and you can find them. If you've got a rack and you want to get a rack server and you stick it inside of a cabinet, go for your life. But they can be quite costly because the parts inside of it are more server grade, which is something you've got to think about in future if you're wanting to expand the thing, you want more grunt later on, more CPU, more RAM, whatever inside of it later on, you're going to have to pay for it because they do cost a little bit more. But the nice thing about that is that then you can build a much better, faster fleet of virtual servers as opposed to some of the little ones. Now you've got the option around mini PCs, mini computers, micro PCs. They go, they go by basic, lots of different sorts of names. What are they? They're essentially a little mini computer. You don't have the big ones, you have little ones. And the nice thing, of course, about the little ones is you can put them absolutely everywhere. They're also cheaper, which is really, really cool. This is the spread that I've got. I've got a few different collections out here. Some are absolutely amazing. I love these things because they're small, they're cute, they're tiny. They, some of them are fanless, which means they don't even have a fan, which means they're completely silent, which is absolutely awesome. And then the nice thing is rather than buying yourself maybe a big computer or a fully fledged server, you get yourself maybe one or a selection of these little ones, and then you can build yourself a virtual farm. You can install a whole bunch of hypervisors, virtual machines, and you can go to town because you've got a whole bunch of different ones. And if one of them fails, if you've got it set up properly, the other one can take over the load and keep doing its thing. But the only thing about the mini PCs is yes, they're small, they're tiny, they're absolutely very, very beautiful, is that they're not as powerful, they're not as grunty as the bigger ones. Ultimately, you're gonna pay less, but you're not gonna get the performance that you may want to. And especially if you're thinking about building a whole pool of virtual machines, whatever they may be, the more virtual machines you want to build, the bigger, the more powerful the computer should be. So when you're doing all of your planning, you're having to think about well, what computer should I get? Always have a think about that. The small ones, yes, they're small, they're cheaper. You know, if you're on a budget, they're really, really good, but you won't be able to build as much stuff onto one of those. So things like the CPU, right? The CPU is not going to be as big as some of the bigger ones. On some of these fully fledged servers, big performance computers, you've got your Xeon processors, your Intel Xeon processors, for example. Some of the smaller ones, well, they're gonna be maybe your Intel i5, i7 sometimes, i9s perhaps. You've got Celerons as well. You've got essentially CPUs that aren't gonna be as powerful. The big servers, you could have sometimes two CPUs. How amazing, with lots of threads, which lets you do a whole bunch of cool stuff. The smaller ones, well, you can only really have one CPU and that's really where you're at. The same deal is around your RAM. Of course, the big servers, you can put a lot more RAM, which then allows you to build a lot more virtual servers. The smaller ones, not so many. I mean, some of these smaller ones, yes, you can get 32, 64 gig of RAM in some of them, and that's really, really nice. But also, you're not gonna be able to build as many virtual machines because you don't have the RAM processing power that you need. Processing power is for your CPU. Then you've also got the storage. What does the storage look like? And really, this really depends on what your storage platform is gonna be. In my case, I've got a NAS. I've got a place where I can stick all of my virtual servers in this one spot. Now look, I don't want you to discount the small ones all together because I love the small ones and they're awesome. I can easily just pick them up, relocate them, easy. They're tiny, which means I can put them absolutely everywhere. You know, they're great for media servers. You can put them on the back of your TV. You can do a lot more little things with them, little labs, little development stuff, great for learning. While the big ones, they're big, they're chunky, they're heavy. They're gonna cost you a lot of money. They're noisy, all of these other negative things with the big ones as well. So a simple side-by-side -side comparison between the two, the big ones are big, the small ones are small. The performance, you can't even compare. The big ones, especially if they're pumped full of these awesome resources, are always gonna be faster. They're gonna perform better. They're gonna have more storage. You're gonna be able to build a bigger farm of virtual servers than the little ones. The big ones will always win. Then the big ones are more costly. They're bigger. It's important to also think about the future. What is this thing gonna be used for in the next five years? Right now, you're wanting to build five virtual machines. Great, good for you. Then in 10 years, five years, you're wanting to build a lot more, but you don't have the capacity, you don't have the space. So you have to go and buy 
buy something else later on. Maybe you need to buy more RAM, more hard drive space, more processing power later on. Well, do you want to do that later on or are you willing to do it now? That way you've got a good beefy computer that will last you a fair bit of time. Is have a think about the actual virtual technology, virtualization technology that you're going to be using. You're wanting to build virtual servers. All right, great. Well, you need to have some software to be able to build virtual servers. So to be able to build a virtual server, you need to be using something like VMware, like Citrix, like Proxmox. There's a whole bunch of different sorts of hypervisors, virtualization platforms that are out there. You can even have a Mac computer, a Windows computer, and then install something like VMware Fusion, VMware Workstation directly on the computer. VirtualBox would be another one that you can run directly on the computer. So you actually have Windows running some virtualization software to then be able to allow you to build virtual machines, virtual PCs. Really, really cool, really, really complex. Now, yes, of course, the choice is yours about what uh, computer you're gonna buy. But here are the, some of the ones that I have. This is uh, my server rack. This is where I keep all of my gear. And I've got a collection and they all serve different purposes. And I've got all of the virtualization platforms. But anyway, my big old rack server here is a HP DL360. It's a pro Lyant, and this thing is awesome. Couple of CPUs, lots of RAM. It's just awesome, right? And that is my main, main one where I use for all of my dev stuff, all of my testing, all, it's essentially called a sandbox environment where I can just build a whole bunch of stuff. But I don't leave it on all the time because this is my home. This is not a workplace where I'm at right now and it can get quite noisy and my electricity bills go up and I don't want any of that. But then together with that, I've got a range of little computers. And yes, I have uh, my favorite ones are probably the Pro Lions, and I've also got this thing called the Zimmerboard and the Intel NUC. They're probably the three that I use more than anything else. Now outside of these uh, little computers and this rack server, I've also played around with more tower based servers, either a Dell or a HP tower. And they're cool because they're actually servers. So they've got server grade parts. They're not as big as the rack one, but they're also been pretty good. So do you love tech? I love tech. And if you do love tech, I'd love it if you do the subscription thing. Let me know down below in the comments what you thought of this video. And hey, remember to do that notification bell as well when you do the subscribe thing so you don't miss out on any of our videos. We release videos on all things tech and we'll see you on the next video.